Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters. Back out here with another video to discuss some of our cookware that we sell at Self Reliance Outfitters, how it was developed, how it can be used, how multifunctional it can be. What I've got here is I've got a modified Woodland Chef kit. When I say modified, it's got a couple of additions to it that aren't currently in the Woodland Chef kit on the website. And some of them are things that I've found and pieced together in my personal kit. And I would suggest that you make any kit that you're carrying like this a personalized kit. We give you the pieces and parts and the major components that you need, and then you may add small additions to that kit to make it more personalized for you. This is the one that I carry as a base camp kit. I've got a box that I carry in my Jeep, but I have pulled the cook partner stove out of my Jeep, and that's what we're gonna use to cook on today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a pork and potato pot pie in a bush pot oven as we discuss and walk through this kit. So stay with me guys and we'll get started. So concentrating on the bush pot portion of this, I'm just going to pull things out of here and talk through them really fast. But then I want to show you the nesting and the reasons and things like that, okay? So I always keep a mixing bowl in the very top of mine on top of everything else. It gives me a little room for things that are stacked higher possibly than the bush pot because I also have a cup. Again, this is something I purchased at an antique mall. It's a stainless steel cup from probably a military kitchen. I always carry a pastry cutter with me. You can use a fork but this thing does a hell of a lot better job than on pastries. And so when I'm making biscuits and I'm making bread and I'm making flatbreads and things like that, I like to have that, okay? I've got two bowls in there. We're gonna use one of these bowls to make our pot pie in today. Now, the main portion of this, if you pull this out of here now, that I've gotten that stuff off the top, what you have in here is you have a one quart bush pot, a two quart bush pot, which has the lid for the one quart in the bottom of it, and you have a three quart bush pot that has two plates in the bottom of it, all right? So you have three different options here for bush pots. All of them are exactly the same except in size. So you have one quart with a locking bail and large heavy gauge batwing handles. What I like about this pot, and this is our newest pot, what I really like about this pot is it makes a great solo cook set with some kind of a small isobutane stove or on the campfire. It can also be used for a mug for drinking coffee out of in a set like this if you wanted to. Big cup of coffee, lots of people like big cups of coffee. But it also makes a great solo set. So all of that nests one inside the other. And then in the bottom, I just have my skillet, which is here. I have a skillet lid. I have both of the other bush pot lids. And in the very bottom, I have two racks. One of them for the three quart bush pot, one of them for the two quart bush pot. They also can be used just over the fire as cook racks. Okay, so beyond this, the utensils I would carry are a folding Victorinox paring knife, a folding spatula, a fork, because I always have a spoon in my canteen kit or my water bottle, and a short pair of tongs. Along with the rest of this stuff, you can cook anything you want to cook and then some with those items. So today what we're going to do is we're going to use the three quart bush pot as an oven. So we're going to take this rack and we're going to put it in there sideways. And once we get our pot pie made, we're going to put it in here. And this is going to be our oven on our camp stove. You could also just do this. However, doing something like this that will trap the heat is also going to give you the max amount of heat down here which can burn your food really quick, especially if it's a crust or bread. So having that standoff inside the bush pot like this is much better. Okay, so let's talk about the ingredients we're gonna need. We're gonna need some self-rising flour, a little bit of butter, and water. That's gonna make our crust three ingredients very simple. Inside, we're gonna hydrate some dehydrated vegetables here. These are just like a soup green type vegetable. We're gonna hydrate those while we're boiling our potatoes down. And then we're going to add some shredded seasoned pork mix to that. That's already in a bag and already pre-cooked. All right, so the first thing for us to do is get a couple potatoes on the boil. So we're not gonna need a whole lot because we don't have a real big pot to put this pot pie in. So we're just gonna take like four of these and that's probably gonna be more than we need, but we'll take four anyway. And we're going to get them on the boil.
All right, the next thing we need to do is make our dough, which is gonna be our bottom layer and our top layer for a pie. So I got some self-rising flour right here. And again, you can carry that easily enough in some kind of a bag. And I've got my measuring device here, which is a military spoon. One, two, three. Three of those bad boys. Whatever that measurement turns out to be, I don't know exactly. I've got a quarter stick of butter here. This is Land Lakes real butter. And I'm gonna take half of that at first, and I'm gonna put it inside here with this flour. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to cut that into the flour, okay? You want this butter to be cold if it's possible. You want any water that you add to be cold if it's possible. You're gonna get this stuff stuck in your pastry cutter. Don't worry about that, just scrape it out. Get back after it. I'm putting in butter a little at a time and I'm gonna add water a little at a time because I wanna be careful how much I put in. I don't wanna make it too thick and make way too much, okay? When you stop getting chunks on your pastry cutter, pretty much got it cut in good. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a little water before I add more butter. Again, you want this water cold if possible. If that's not possible, so be it. And I'm putting in very little at a time. I like this round bowl because it works really good with this pastry cutter. And this small pastry cutter works really good with this round bowl. Again, that's things that you're gonna figure out as you're doing this stuff and as you go. It's not stuff you're gonna have buy off the shelf probably the first time around. It may take you a few times to get it figured out. What we want here is something that's fluffy but it sticks together, but it's nice and flaky too, which is about what we've got right here. All right, so we'll take our fork, we'll cut that off the pastry cutter. Make sure it's all out of there, just like that. Pretty simple. And that really is kind of consistency that I'm looking for right there. All right, so our potatoes are boiling up here. We're gonna get in here and we're gonna get one scoop of these greens out of here. One full scoop, we're gonna put them in with our four potatoes. And we're gonna let that boil up. All right, now we're going to take about three quarters of our dough here. And we just want it to stick together in our hand. We don't want to overwork it. So as long as it sticks together in our hand and we can flatten it out, that's what we're looking for. Again, we don't want to overwork this. We want this to be big enough to fill the bottom and come up on the sides of the pot that we're making our pot pie in. Kind of roll this dude out a little bit. Just like this. We want it thin. We don't want it breaking up on us either. You gotta be careful with that. All right, so now, I'm gonna try to get this dude off the table. And if we flour our table good, we'll be able to do that. If we didn't flour our table good, we're not gonna be able to. And we're gonna try to put this on the inside here. And we're gonna kind of form it to this edge Kind of even things up down in here a little bit. Again, be careful you don't overwork this dough, okay? That's what we don't want to do. So we're up on the edges and we're even all the way around, just like this. All right. Now we need the top of this. So we'll put this dude out here. Get the rest of this crust off here. See where we end up here. You cut this real close on this recipe, I'm telling you. That is barely going to fit over the top of all that. But we'll get there here in a second. All right, now, we we'll take this bowl here, and we're going to get our ingredients out of the pot, strain them off. Okay. Now we're going to take those ingredients, we're going to put them in here. Get all those vegetables in there. We 
just rehydrated. Now we're going to cut these potatoes up. We can mash these potatoes with a pastry cutter. Not a problem. We're not trying to get them too mashed up. Just trying to cut them down into smaller chunks. Not like that. It's probably good. I'd call that good. Get everything out of our pastry cutter here. Now, we're going to mix a little meat in there. We're going to get it in here much as we decide we want. Remember, you gotta fill that bowl and then cap it off. All right, so we'll take that and I'll just take my fork and cut that in. We're just mixing the meat basically into the vegetables here. Kind of see what consistency we've got. All right, so there's our pot pie filling right there. Now, we'll bring the pot pie over and we get some filling in there. Probably got enough for two of them here, easy enough, which is fine. We'll just make another one here in a few minutes. I'm pushing this down inside this thing really good, just like this. We're kind of taking the gaps out, down right to the edge of the crust, just like that, okay? And now, I'm gonna take my crust that I just made, and I'm going to put it right on the top, just like that. And I'm going to kind of press it down. There's a couple little gaps in there. Don't worry about that. You need some space in there for things to breathe anyway. We're going to end up poking a couple holes in this in a minute. Kind of pinch everything together. Okay, once you've got all that done, now you can just poke a couple holes in here. Just to give us some breathing room. And you're ready to bake it. Okay, I put a thermometer inside this bush pot just so we could see what was going on, get a visual. We'll pull this lid off. You can see that thing is sitting right at about 410 degrees. The crust is looking perfect on that thing. So we're just at the right heat. Let's slide our lid back on and let her bake for about another 10 minutes. So I want to talk to you real quick about this whole cook rack oven concept. About seven or eight years ago, when these cook racks first came on the market, maybe seven years ago, something like that, one of the manufacturers of this rack was here at a hang-in with me. His name's Bob Yeager. And we were talking about this rack, cooking over the fire, and all those types of things. And he's like, hey, I wonder if that would fit in one of your bush pots. And at that point, it was a two-quart bush pot because we didn't have a three-quart yet. So we took the small rack, we put it in the two-quart bush pot, and voila, it made an oven just like you see today. So I just kind of want to let you know that I'd never seen the concept before. I'm sure he had never seen the concept before, and the racks were brand new on the market. So I would say that that is where this whole bush pot oven with the rack came into being, was at that hang-in about seven years ago with Bob Yeager, who incidentally is a direct descendant of Ellsworth Yeager. Pretty interesting stuff. So let's get this bad boy out of here and set it aside to cool. We'll see how she looks. All right, guys, so here's our finished pot pie kind of cut into this dude see what this looks like all the way down look at that crust all the way down to the bottom that crust is absolutely perfect oh man that's <laughs> so freaking good holy cow look at that look how perfect that is mm -mm -mm. If you want to know how good that oven cooks look at that there is a perfect pot pie right there absolutely perfect all right guys well listen i appreciate you joining me out here today for this quick video a little bit of a cooking demonstration but really what this video is about is these bush pots these three nesting bush pots the one quart the two quart and the three quart are really kind of the center pillar of this cook system along with a skillet or two skillets and i'll tell you even back to the 1930s 40s 50s 60s these nesting style cook sets mainly in aluminum were available in every family camper had a set of these things so redeveloping these things in stainless steel only made sense and it gives you what you need to do what we do 
get outside, have a good time, cook some food around the campfire, good family time, good fellowship, and enjoyment in the great outdoors. That's what it's all about, and that's what we're about at Self-Reliance Outfitters. So check us out today at selfrelianceoutfitters.com. I think you'll find some great cookware available for your next adventure. Listen, guys, I appreciate you joining me for this video. I appreciate your views, and I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our business. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.